in this session we would be discussing the glacial landforms we have already talked about the glacial action and the periglacial landforms now when we'll be discussing glacial landforms we'll be focusing on the erosional as well as the depositional features there are around nearly 25 erosional landforms that we'll be discussing today and around three major and then we have the subcategories for the depositional landforms along this along with this we'll be talking about the glaciofluvial landforms so erosional landforms occur when the uh, glacier moves on and by the process of movement of glacier there is erosional activity that is taking place so the first formation that we would be or uh, the first erosional landform that we would be discussing is the formation of silk now silk uh, and one of its subtypes that we would be discussing is the nivation silk now this is formed when a glacier moves along and when it the glacier moves along i can say if i try to take a cross section of this it would occur in this pattern and this shape is also known as the horseshoe shape or the amphitheater shape so silk formation is commonly also known as horseshoe shape and amphitheater shape uh, silks is known by different names in different parts of the world in wales it is known as kum in germany it is known as scar and in scotland it's known as kori it's basically with the movement of glacier there is cutting of the rock that takes place and this formation is what is known as silk now nivation silk is a type of uh, silk uh, it has no basins no moraine deposits along with it and it is formed mainly by the frontal molds that uh, move on so it's uh, we already talked about the process of nivation in the previous class so by the process of nivation if the silk formation takes place in a simple terms i can say it's nivation silk now there are few processes that we would be understanding before we move forward one is plucking and another is abrasion we have already talked about abrasion now plucking is a phenomena when the rock mass is either attached to the glacier and in due course of time it tumbles down so this rock mass would fall down and this is what is known as plucking plucking usually gives a jacked landform in case of abrasion it's kind of uh, movement of particles along with one another so the surface that it creates is a kind of surface of a sandpaper so it's a kind of rough surface that is created and it's due to the collision of the particles with the surface so that is what is process of abrasion during the formation of silk you have both the process of abrasion and plucking that takes place towards the upper surface you can see there is abrasion and as it moves down you have plucking activity that Uh, that can be predominantly seen now what is at formation when we say at formation you have two silk that are uh, going in different direction so one silk is going in this direction and another silk is going in this direction and this formation is known as at formation if i look at the center portion of this let's move on to the previous slide so this is the center part or the intersection of the two silk i could say and this is what is known as coal so coal is basically formed by the recession process and it's at the intersection of the two eddies that can be formed here now the region or the depression where the glacier moves away and by the movement of the glacier there is a formation of depression and that depression is known as glacial trough so you have the formation of glacial trough that you can see here that's a kind of depression in this elevation and finally because of the silk formation there is a kind of depression towards the lower side and this depression is usually filled with water and this is known as or uh, it gives the formation of lake which is known as tarn so tarn is the lake formation towards the base of the silk 
and then finally we talk about the glacial breach glacial breach means when the glacier overspills the valley so when the glacier is moving from here and it overspills the valley that means it moves along you have the coal that joins the highland valley so you have the coal and the highland valley that that are joined and that region is known as the glacial breach so coal tarn and glacier trough the next is horn when you have three or more cirque that are forming uh, that form in different direction so you have one cirque that goes this way another this way and there are two others which go this way so you have a formation of horn and this horn is also known as pyramidal peak so that's another erosional landform uh, which is commonly seen in glacial topography now next is crevasses crevasses i can say are fractures between the glacier so you can see this is a glacier land mass and this is a fracture that is being created within the glacier and this these kind of fractures are known as uh, crevasses now crevasses are a common reason for most of the erosional landforms that you can see crevasses can further be classified into different types so today we would be discussing the five major types of crevasses the transverse crevasse transverse crevasse means when the center part is moving much faster than the surrounding region so the center of the glacier moves at a higher speed as compared to the surrounding areas so it creates cracks along the margins or fissures around the margins where it moves so it's also known as fissures or cracks and this is what is transverse cre uh, crevasses then you have the marginal crevasses marginal crevasses are commonly seen as you move towards the downhill when you go downhill uh, the speed suddenly increases and there are uh, fractures along the margins of the glacier so they are known as marginal crevasses longitudinal crevasses occur parallel to the flow so if the flow is in this direction crevasse will also occur in this direction then you have the birch turn this is usually commonly seen with the cirque formation and it clips off from the main rock so you have the main rock okay and it creates a gap or i could say a crevasse is here at the topmost margin so i can say it's kind of uh, uh, region between the moving glacier and the standing wall so the glacier is moving this way and this is the wall that is standing so the crevasse that is created between the two is known as bergschund and finally ice pinnacles are kind of steep structures that are found and they are kind, uh, they are seen in a topography such that they are uh, they appear to be uh, in a huge group so there are lots of uh tiny elevations or needle shaped structures that you can see and those are known as ice pinnacles and these are uh, in a kind of series that you can see the next is the u shaped valley u shaped valley when we talked about the fluvial uh, landforms we talked about the movement of the river so as the river moves it creates a valley and because the river is narrow and steep it creates a valley which is v shaped and if the river uh, protrudes more and the valley becomes deeper it creates an i shaped valley or i could say a much deeper valley than v shaped valley now what is u shaped valley because of the shape of the glaciers which is a kind of uh, rectangular rock mass i could say or cuboidal uh, rock mass the valley that is formed is of a shape of u rather than a, a steep shape of a shape of v it's a kind of u shaped valley and the region from where the glacier moves creates a u shaped valley throughout the u shaped valley you can see glacial troughs and sickle troughs sickle troughs are usually steep sided and have flat valley bottoms while glacial troughs as we talked about are seen at the intersection of the coal uh, along with the valley uh, hanging valley headlands the next is the hanging valley so you have the main glacier that's flowing in this region this is the region of main glacier movement and then you have another glacier that moves and joins to the main glacier 
So the glacier moving at a higher elevation then the main glacier would create a hanging valley. So hanging valley would, uh, would be at a higher elevation as compared to the main valley and the stream which separates out is known as the misfit stream. Uh, this is similar to what we have talked about in the fluvial landforms. So this was uh, the hanging valley. Next is nunatex. Nunatex are kind of molds or rocks that remain there as the glacier moves you have the ice cover that is all around so all that you can see in brown is the snow or I could say ice so this is all the glacier and there is a rock mass so this is a rock mass which can be seen in white it's not a glacier it's a rock mass that stands in between and this is what is known as Nunatek it is a kind of higher peak as compared to the surrounding areas Sorry. Uh, the next is crag and tail. Crag and tail you have, this is the movement of ice. So, uh, sorry, this is the movement of ice. So, ice moves from the rock which is harder. So, basically it's due to the formation of differential erosion again. So, you have a hard rock mass and a soft rock mass. Now, what is happening is, the ice is moving in this, this direction or the glacier is moving in this direction. The hard rock stands along. However, the soft rock tends to erode down. So you have movement of soft rock debris that take place. And this is of a shape of crag and you have a tail. So this feature is overall known as crag and tail. The next is Roche mountain. It's a bit different from uh, the crag and tail topography because here the upstream activity that is taking place here is the abrasion however the downstream activity that you can see here is plucking and this roaches mountain uh, uh, appears as small hummocks or small hills across the glacial region so the region from where the glacier moves on you will see kind of small hills that can be visible with one side which is very smooth uh, due to abrasion the other side which has a kind of jack pattern and this is what is known as roche mountain the next is we already talked about the plucking and the abrasion now abrasion creates a effect of sandpaper as we discussed and these create striations or grooves. Striations or grooves are minor uh, fractures as compared to crevasses. When we talked about crevasses, uh, crevasses are bigger and huge in size as compared to striations. Striations are minor fractures that can appear on the surface and those are again one of the topographical uh, features of glacial area. The next is glacial mill. As you can see here, you have a kind of narrow tube of water that moves down and from this narrow tube of water, uh, narrow hole or narrow tube, you have water that moves down below the glacier and it uh, kind of smoothens the flow of glacier and this is what is known as glacier mills. They are also known as molens. So these are the glacier mills. The next is regals. Regals are rock bars that you can see. So you have the glacier that moves through this region and these two arrow denotes the rock bars that are towards the surface of the uh, glacier. They are also known as thresholds and these regals if there are continuous rock bars that can be seen they create a feature which is known as glacial stairways. So you have the glacier that rather than flowing or moving through a smooth surface kind of moves from a uh, stepped uh, landform or I could say it creates a stepped landform when it moves. So when it's cutting the rock, it's cutting in such a fashion that there is differential erosion and you have a stepped feature that is seen and from those steps you have the movement of glacier that takes place. Similar to glacial stairways, there is a type of stairways that is known as cyclopene stairways. 
Uh, cyclopene stairways is a kind of longitudinal profile and it is commonly seen in the regions of hanging valleys. So in the region where there are numerous hanging valleys, you will see a cyclopene stairs. The next is Petronoster Lake. Petronoster Lake is again seen uh, in a region where you have a kind of continuous lake formations and you have a mild, uh, you have one lake and then you have a small pathway and then you have another lake and so on. So series of lake that can be seen are known as Petronoster Lakes. These are commonly seen uh, in the areas of Northern Russia and Alaska. The next is Fryots. Fryots are the <coughs> when the glacier is moving along the surface. This was the pink line indicates the base of the glacier basin before the movement of the glacier but after the movement of the glacier there is erosional activity that takes place and this is the new bottom line that is created for the Freud's. So it's basically the opening of the, uh, the glacial trough. So at, as the glacier moved away from this region you will see a glacial trough in this region and this is what is known as Freud's. The next is Finger Lakes commonly seen in the regions of Canada specifically around the Lake Ontario you have an example here. So these lakes separate out as fingers from the main lake and all these are glacial in origin. So this is what is known as the Finger Lake. Then you have the truncated spurs. So the region where you have the hanging valleys that meet with the main glacier. So you have the main glacier that's flowing here. You have the main glacier that's flowing here. You have the hanging valleys uh, or the hanging glaciers that drop into the main glacier. And then you have the vertical walls that remain separated from this region. And those vertical walls or the standing features would be known as truncated spurs. Because they are truncated or cut down due to the impact of glacier that's moving along. But they now stand apart or could be seen obviously in that region. And those are known as truncated spurs. The next is uh, the depositional patterns. Now, uh, besides truncated spurs, there are three other features that we, uh, we must discuss. First is the rock basin. So as the rock moves or the glacier moves, there are uh, flat lines that are formed and that those are known as rock basins. Then you have the step cutting which is the, similar to the glacial staircase or the rock steps and finally drum lines. Now drum lines are considered both part of erosional as well as depositional landform because there is erosional activity there is that is taking place or in the region of active glacier activities you can see erosional drum lines however where the glacier slow downs or tends to recede you will see again small depositions and those are known as drum lines they are small hillocks that can be seen and they are similar to basket of egg topography it is also known as because it appears as if there are numerous eggs that are arranged in a basket. So they, uh, they are known as basket of egg topography. It's as I said, it's again uh, erosional as well as a depositional landform. So you can mark it in both. However, if you are, it's predomin predominantly depositional. However, if you are taking it under erosional, you must mention drumlins and erosional. Now next is the depositional landforms. Under depositional landforms, the most important is the moraines. Now what are moraines? As the glacier moves along, it's moving along some surface. Since it's moving along some surface, it's, uh, there is abrasion that is taking place or there is removal of the sediments that is taking place from those surface. And that removal of the surface is in the form of fine particles, pebbles, cobbles or boulders as well. And those are known as moraines. So moraines are sediments that move along with the glacier. As we saw in the case of fluvial landforms when the river is moving along, it's taking along with it the sediments from the nearby area. Similarly, when the glacier moves along, the sediment that it takes along with us with it are known as moraines. Now moraines can be of various types. <coughs> we'll be discussing some of the major moraines here. Now first is N-glacial. N-glacial moraines are those moraines that are encompassed within the glacier. So within the glacier if you can see small particles of sand or pockets of sand or sediments th those are known as N-glacial. So they are within the glaciers. 
Next is subglacial. They are towards the bottom of the glacier. That's very obvious because as the ice is moving towards the bottom of it, you will have the sub subglacial uh, moraines. Now we will be talking about three simple moraines, the terminal, lateral and medial. Those should be very clear. So if the glacier is starting from here and it's moving in this direction, what is happening? Towards the end, it's the terminus or the end point. So terminal means the end point. And towards the end, the deposition of the sediments is known as the terminal moraines. When it's cutting the sides, these are known as lateral moraines or marginal moraines, I could say. And when there are two glaciers, so you have one glacier from here and you have another glacier from here. And the region where the two glaciers are meeting, the between, in between you will have deposition of moraines and that would be known as the medial moraine or I could say the moraine that are deposited in the middle. Now there is some other kind of moraine that we will be talking about. Push moraine, push moraine is due to the flow of the glacier or the push of the glacier that is taking place. Dead ice is towards the end. So after the terminus, if there is deposition of glacier, which is where the glacial activity ends, you have moraine deposits, those are known as dead ice moraines. Then you have the recessional moraine. Recessional moraine means when the glacier was receding, it moved down and slowly it retreated back. So before the terminal moraine, you will see recessional moraines. So recessional moraines are due to as the glacier recedes back, you have deposition of the moraines much closer to the present glacier. So the glacier moved till here and then it receded back. And the region where it receded led to formation of recessional moraines. Lateral moraine and medial moraine we already talked about. Next is interlobate, mor uh, interlobate moraines. These are similar to the lateral more, uh, moraines and they are found towards the margin but they are kind of uh, unconsolidated and uh, located within the uh, fractures of the rocks and the glacier and finally you have the ground moraines that are towards the end side and they are much finer in uh, size because they are compressed due to the pressure of glaciers. The next is drumlins. Drumlins we already talked about. So you have the direction of eyes and you can see the basket of egg topography that we discussed. So you have small hills that can be seen towards the end of the, uh, the glacial depositional features. And finally you have the glacial tills. They are also known as boulder clays. Now these can be classified as primary tills and secondary tills. Primary tills are those which are formed by the direct action of the glacier. So direct action, so direct action of the glacier would lead to formation of primary tills. However, secondary tills are due to indirect action of the, these are due to the indirect action of the glacial activity. Now, basically when we talk about tills or boulder clays, when the glacier moved on towards the end, uh, the glacier receded and when it receded it left behind numerous stones, pebbles and uh, erratics I could say and those are what are known as the glacial tills or the boulder clays. Now the primary clay can be further subdivided into four types. You have the lodgement till. Lodgement till is towards the base of the glacier and that is due to the melting of the base of the glacier. Usually they are seen in a parallel arrangement. So they are towards the base of the glacial due to the melting of the glacial from the bottom. The next is deformation till. As the name suggests, they are disintegrated and homogenized and the original rock that exists is deformed into various shapes. Now the next two are very important and a lot of students get confused between these two. You have the sublimation till and the melting till. Now the only major difference between these two are here the glacial the glacier that is there so the ice converts into water and due to the activity of ice converting into water whatever rock forms are formed are known as melting tills however in case of sublimation till the ice directly evaporates 
or I could say there is direct sublimation, it forms vapors and moves away and that is known as the sublimation tail. So that is the major difference between the two. Now melting glaciers or melting tails can further be classified into two types, the supratils and the subtils. Supratils as the name suggests are towards the surface or the upper surface of the glacier. However, the subtils are formed towards the lower surface of the glaciers. Now the next topography that we would be discussing is the glacio fluvial landforms. A lot of candidates are struck up here as to how we are merging both the glacial and the fluvial landforms. It's exactly not that we are merging the two landforms but if we try to practically understand it when the glacier is moving and it's coming below the region of the snow line as we saw in the previous class the process of accumulation and ablation takes place and if the ablation activity is much higher than accumulation it would uh, glacier would recede as the glacier recedes there is increase in the temperature and that glacier would give rise to formation of rivers and those rivers will move down so it's a kind of juncture where you have the glacial activity that's receding and the river activities or the water activities that is originating and that area in general we discuss those areas separately and those are studied under the glacial fluvial landforms now the most common is the outwash plain because the glacier moved to an extent it receded back and then due to the basal melting there is water flow that's taking place so there is a kind of plain area that's created and that plain area is highly fertile and it's also known as the outwash plain. So that's the first thing. Now the next is eskers. Eskers as you know are kind of ridges or uh, I could say uh, sinuses that can be seen. They are either straight or can be curved or zigzagged in pattern. Uh, it's the region where the glacial activity tends to slow down. You have increase in the velocity and then you have the water activity that picks up and that leads to winding of the ridges and formation of eskers. So these are eskers. Then you have the formation of canes. Canes are small molds similar to what we have seen as drumlins in the glacial topography. In the glacial fluvial landforms we call these small hills as canes and these are flat topped. So you have a small flat, flat topped hills that can be seen here which are known as canes. Now canes can be again of three types. You have the canes boulders, canes terraces. Canes terraces means they appear as terrace. So you have one below the other that would be seen. You have the cane boulders where you have the boulders that are predominant and then the esker canes where you have the canes along the eskers that can be formed. The next is the, uh, the end region would have a lot of moraines. Because of that, there would be formation of uh, kind of uh, rumbling fields that you can see here, which are much predominant as compared to caves. However, towards the end, you have formation of small depressions and those are known as kettles. Within these kettles, there is deposition of water that takes place and those are known as kettle lakes. So kettles and kettle lakes are seen at a region where there is terminal point for glaciers. So beyond this line which you can see here this is the deposition of end moraines and beyond end moraines there is no more glacial activity and the only landforms that you can see here are kettle lakes. So kettle lakes are different from tarn lakes which are seen in the glacial topography which is an extension of the, uh, the silk formation that is taking place and then finally you have the wars that can be seen here. Wars are deposition of clay and sediments in two shades I could say light and dark there is a kind of variation in this pattern if the deposits are much finer they are darker in color and they are uh, laminar set however if the depositions are not that finer uh, or are kind of coarser I could say they are lighter in color and these are what are known as warm deposits which can be seen along the washout plains. So with this we covered the 
erosional and the depositional glacier features and the glacial fluvial landforms in the subsequent class we will be covering the uh, aeolian features you can subscribe to our channel for any further updates have a good day